Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to start by sharing my screen so that you guys can see it. Okay. Okay, so thank you guys all for coming for, to the in-service tonight. So my name is Rachel and I am one of the physical therapists at Lakeshore East. Um, so our Lakeshore East clinic, it's right off of kind of Columbus and Randolph in the loop, um, right behind the Blue Cross Blue Shield building. So kind of before I get started, just a little bit more about React PT. We are an outpatient PT clinic with five clinics, not only in the Chicago um, area, but also in the northern suburbs. And at REACT, we really focus on the whole body approach and stressing kind of that one-on-one -on -one care in order for patients to get better. Um, right now, kind of with everything, we are offering telehealth visits, as well as we still have our in-clinic services available to everyone. And then if you're interested in, or if someone you know is interested in PT, we're usually able to get in people very quickly. In Illinois, we are direct access, which means you're allowed to come into PT without a doctor's note. And then we also do offer free screens. So if you're not sure if uh, you need PT completely or if you kind of just need a little bit of advice, you can come in for a free screen and we can take a quick look at you and kind of help guide you through that. Um, before we get started, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, um, I am asking you to kind of save all the questions for the end. I have a little bit of a hard time going back and forth to see the chat. So um, definitely please ask your questions, but um, I'm going to save them kind of for at the very end. Um, and then if anyone misses anything, you can always rewatch this presentation um, as the slides in this video will be available on our website. Uh, so a little bit about kind of to, to the TMJ, so that stands for the temporomandibular joint, which is kind of just the medical term for the jaw. I myself have gotten very interested in the jaw. Um, as I was an exercise aide before I started PT school, I worked for a PT who was specialized in the TMJ, so I got to watch him work with all the patients. And then when I got to PT school myself, I um, my program director actually did all of her research in the jaw. So she also, she, they gave us more curriculum on the jaw than most schools. And then I've actually had my own jaw pain and kind of clicking that's kind of helped myself um, so I've also been able to kind of do some of these PT things for my own issues. So starting off, I'm going to give kind of a brief um, overview about the anatomy of the jaw. So this is our most used joint during daily activities. They think we use it about 1,500 to 2,000 times a day. That's because you're using it every time you're speaking, every time you're chewing, every time you're swallowing, and it helps out with breathing a lot too. So you're, we're kind of constantly using it throughout the day but it does have all the same components of the other joints in the body. So just like how we talk about shoulder joints, knee joints, hip joints, that it's composed of almost all the same things. And just like all those joints, it can be weak. Um, those muscles can not be coordinated. The joint itself can be a little bit stiff. Um, so those are all things that we can work on because it is kind of the same joint as other parts of the body. So the specific kind of anatomy, so, it's made up of two different bones. So at the top is the temporal bone. And um, so that is uh, kind of right next to your skull. And then the mandible is kind of the second part. And so that's where the name TMJ comes from. Um, so kind of right in that last slide here, um, you see that I am, so this is Portia. She was very helpful in helping me get all the pictures for this. Um, but so these are two different ways that I can actually assess and see how the jaw is moving. So the first way is kind of putting um, my hands on the outside. If you kind of go right in front of your ear and you open and close, you can feel your jaw uh, open and closing through there. And then if I'm looking specifically for swelling, I actually will put my little fingers in the ear and kind of press forward. And that's kind of what I'm doing in that second picture. And the reason um, kind of we go right next to that ear is you can see this picture kind of up on the right. So the ear canal is almost right in front of where that joint is. So we use the ear kind of a lot as we're looking at that joint. Uh, so the, one of the things that does make the TMJ different is it has something called an art, a disc in between that separates that joint into two different spaces. And this disc, while there is kind of um, support in other joints, this disc um, is made of fibrocartilage, 
which means that it is actually, they found that it's able to withstand wear and tear a lot more than other joints in the body, which lets it kind of do those repetitive tasks over and over and over and being the most used joint in the body. And they've actually found that it also has a better reparative, which is why people and the jaw is able to heal so quickly. And once again, kind of put up with the strain every day. Um, and kind of with that disc itself, one of the big reasons we talk about it is a common jaw complaint is clicking inside the jaw. So that comes usually from the disc itself. So as you're talking, um, you, the jaw has, uh, that disc has three different parts to it and it wants to keep kind of that middle part right on top, as you can kind of see in this picture below, it wants to stay right on top there so that um, as you're opening and closing, it's staying kind of in the prime location. And sometimes when it's not moving so that it's kind of like directly on top, that's when we get those clicks as it's kind of trying to move back on top or it's moving forward. So that clicking comes from that disc trying to get kind of back into the place that it needs to be. Okay, so then kind of talking a little bit about the muscles of the jaw. So there's uh, four major ones that we talk about. So starting off is the temporalis. So this is that muscle that um, you kind of, when everyone talks about like rubbing their temples, that's that big muscle. You can kind of see it over here to the, um, in the picture to the right. It's this big muscle on the side of the head um, and it actually has a connection all the way down to the jaw. The masseter, um, so this is actually the strongest muscle they have found in the entire body. And it kind of goes from your cheekbone down to the angle of your jaw. So it, it covers a very large part. And as the strong, strongest muscle, it's the one that's kind of especially used in chewing and, every, and talking and kind of all of those motions throughout the day. So both those muscles you can kind of feel on the outside. There are two specific inside jaw muscles. And if you look at this picture to the left, you can see the lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid. So these muscles are so important, not only because they help with the jaw motions, but the lateral pterygoid is actually attached to the, to the um, disc itself. So as that disc is moving, this is one of the main muscles that we kind of look at and see how it's working because it has that kind of direct connection to the disc. Um, but then if you look down at this picture down at the bottom, so you also have the suprahyoid and the infrahyoid muscles. So these are actually neck muscles. So they attach the jaw, they attach the bone, and then they, they attach all the way down to not only your sternum, so like your chest bone, your collar bones, they also attach all the way back to your uh, shoulder blades. So this is why posture is one of the, uh, is a very important component of jaw pain because these muscles that help stabilize the jaw so that it can do things like chew, speak, and kind of do all the daily activities it needs, the stabilization actually comes from the neck itself and from your shoulders and your upper back. So having a good posture, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, helps out the jaw a lot. And then not really to go too in depth here, but um, this is something that I think is very important, especially in terms of jaw pain. So the jaw is innervated by, we call it the trigeminal nerve. Um, so to the left, you kind of have a picture of it going through. So it not only innervates the joint itself, so it's kind of the pain you feel from the joint or the sensation you feel from the joint, it also innervates the muscles. So it's what kind of controls the muscles and gets them to move. But that's not its only job. So this picture on the right here, you can see um, different colors in the face. So this nerve also does sensation for our entire face. And you can see it actually overlaps to the ear a little bit. And then you can kind of see it's kind of connecting and going up. So this picture is going back to the brainstem. So the reason this is important is these nerves um, that not only is it helping those muscles work as you're chewing and it's a sensation of the face, but the nucleus it attaches to is kind of where it gets the information to send it up to the brain. Now, and at that same nucleus is where um, you have nerves from the neck coming and you have nerves from the ear coming. So I think of kind of this nucleus kind of like a post office. So it's getting kind of constant information and it sends it to the brain. However, sometimes the address looks very similar, but like the zip code might be off a little bit. So it might actually send it to the wrong place. And so this is why a lot of times when people have dysfunction or issues with the jaw, instead of having jaw pain, they'll have symptoms of ear pain or they'll have headaches. Um, or if they have ne a neck issue, it'll also kind of perceive as headaches or jaw pain because all those signals are kind of going to that same post office where it has a lot of kind of mail and everything to sort through. So sometimes the signals can get mixed up a little bit. 
So kind of discussing causes of jaw pain in general. So um, these are some of the main ones. There can be other reasons, but um, it can be caused by direct trauma to the, to the jaw. So like getting hit, uh, kind of falling, hitting the neck, anything like that can cause direct trauma to the, to the jaw. Uh, and then you can have micro trauma, so kind of a building up over time. And we see a lot of this with like grinding, clenching, kind of overusing those muscles just puts a little bit of pressure on the joint. And as that can constantly build and build, it kind of just causes a little bit, we call it a micro trauma to the joint. Just like kind of every other joint, as we talked about before, um, it can have arthritis as we've, as people commonly talk about with the knee and the hip. And then other systemic conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, as they can affect other joints, it can also affect the jaw joint too. Um, so it is also some, sometimes affected during dental procedures. And this is not because of anything the dentist is doing, but the jaw kind of remaining in that open position, um, especially so that they can go in and make sure they're getting everything in the teeth in the back. Sometimes the jaw is just open for a little bit too long and that can kind of cause some issues with the jaw afterwards. And then something big too is, so we use this muscle all the time and that kind of grinding and clenching, they see increases a lot with stress and anxiety. So um, as stress and anxiety increases, sometimes the jaw is one of the first joints to feel that because of kind of the, the buildup of those kind of micro traumas because of this, the increased stress and anxiety. So signs and symptoms of jaw pain. So there's a lot of other ones, but these are some of the big ones. So specifically kind of pain in the jaw. So talk, especially with talking, eating and swallowing. So any of those motions that you're commonly doing, a lot of times people can have pain in the jaw itself. Um, and then another big one that I hear a lot of times is about kind of that joint sound or that kind of clicking. You can have this with or without pain, but the click itself lets us know that something, um, that it's coming from the jaw. And as I kind of elaborated on a little bit before with um, the nerves, so a lot of times people will have neck pain, earache, rain in the ears, and sometimes that dizziness, because our ears also kind of help with dizziness. So if sometimes you have jaw pain, you won't actually feel it in your jaw, but you'll be getting a bunch of kind of weird ear symptoms too, that when you go and treat and have um, other doctors look at, like an ENT, like they're not really finding anything wrong with the ears. Sometimes that means it's actually coming from the jaw. Um, and then limited mouth opening, so difficulty kind of opening your mouth enough to chew. Once again, this could be painful or not painful, but kind of difficulty getting all those jaw motions. And then this last one, so this phantom tooth pain. So I have two pictures to the right kind of of this. So um, just like how I kind of talked about how those nerves, they kind of all have that one kind of post office where they send information. Muscles can have things we call trigger points. So these trigger points is when they're the tight part of the muscle. And when that muscle's tight, it can also send pain somewhere else. So this will be kind of a pain, um, that's why it's called like phantom, because like it'll feel like it's coming from the teeth, but when you touch the teeth or have the dentist look at the teeth, it's not reproducing that pain. It's like, it's somewhere else. And so this muscle or this picture first on the left, so this is that masseter muscle we talked about. And you can see kind of in these top two pictures that sometimes having those, that trigger point in the masseter can send pain to the back uh, molars, so the top molars and the bottom molars. And you can also see that this muscle can cause kind of a headache or that earache. So those are just some common referral patterns we see from the masseter. And this picture on the, on the right, that's one of those neck muscles that I was talking about before, and it can actually send kind of that phantom tooth pain to the two front teeth. Um, so these are all kind of symptoms that might mean that the dysfunction is actually coming from the jaw itself. And um, kind of with the jaw itself. So they've actually seen that probably about 50 to 75% of the population will kind of have issues with the jaw at some point, but usually because of how good that disc is and how reparative it is, usually conditions are able to kind of heal and resolve on their own with uh, a limited percentage of cases actually needing to see someone like a physical therapist or a dentist or a doctor kind of for their symptoms. So the jaw is pretty good. Um, and usually the people who experience this jaw pain are women. They're three to five times more likely. And usually it's kind of in the 20 to 40s um, when they have more of these symptoms. Okay, and kind of talking a little bit more about physical therapy in the jaw, just so you can kind of know 
major things that um, I look at, especially during an examination. So before even getting into the jaw, I first look at overall posture, breathing patterns, and speech. So this picture to the right over here, um, I think it's a really good picture because it shows how much posture can actually affect the jaw. So this person, they, they're kind of, we call this the forward shoulder position, or they have an increase uh, um, at their upper back and then their shoulders are forward. So what that does, and then the neck has to go up so that you're actually able to see your world because everything's kind of leaning down. So you tilt your neck up and you can see from this red arrow that that actually causes a pull at the jaw, trying to keep it down. So those muscles that have to kind of keep the jaw in place actually have to work twice as hard. So they can cause a little bit more compression kind of at the area and they can get tight because they're constantly working because they're in a posture that kind of causes them to have to be overactive. And then you see a couple other um, muscles uh, in the neck itself. So those can also get tight from being in this position. So I think this is a great picture to kind of show how one of the areas can affect some of the other areas. Um, so those, those neck is, is working kind of just with the jaw. And kind of in that same kind of line of thought, that's why when I'm doing the exam, not only am I looking at the jaw, but I also want to look at the neck, I want to look at the upper back, and I want to look at the shoulders. I want to look for muscle strength, tightness, and range of motion of all of these. Um, so these are all kind of the closest joints to the, um, the jaw itself, and they all kind of have a connection. One of the uh, metaphors I like to use for this is they're kind of all coworkers. So they all work together to try to get the same job done. And um, so if at one point, if, so if one of the coworkers isn't doing their job, the other coworkers have to pick up the slack. And you don't hear complaining from the coworker that's not doing their job. You hear the complaining from the coworkers that are doing twice the amount they're supposed to. So sometimes, even though the pain's from the jaw, it might be because the neck's restricted so that the jaw has to work twice as hard as normal or the upper back or the shoulders. So kind of seeing all the joints, how they work kind of uh, with each other to make sure that you can kind of optimize and make it so that the jaw doesn't have to work as hard as it needs to. And so kind of going into specifically the jaw. So these are some of the main motions of the jaw. Um, once again, thank you for Portia for taking all these photos for me. Um, so these, I take um, actual measurements of each of these motions because they give me a lot, not only about how your jaw is able to move and work, but it lets me, it helps me kind of come up with my diagnosis and what we need to work on. So on the left is kind of just mouth opening. So seeing how much you can open. The two pictures in the middle is we call this lateral excur excursion or how much you can move your, your uh, jaw to the left, how much you can move your bottom jaw to the right. And then protraction and retraction are the photos to the right. And that's how much you can bring kind of your, your bottom teeth in front of your lower teeth and how far you can bring them back, kind of like giving yourself a big underbite or an overbite. So all those motions are kind of combined in what we need for like chewing, for talking and everything. So each one of these is important. And usually I will kind of measure these. Um, I will measure these so that I can kind of get those numbers. I was going to be blocking for the photos, but kind of the differences in side to side, like I said, kind of gives me a lot of information here. So not only when I'm looking at opening, am I looking at the amount of motion, but also how you open gives me a lot of information. So um, Portia has kind of exaggerated each of these motions, so it's easier to see. But so this first one is just deflection. And so this is when you move um, your jaw and it doesn't come back to center when you're opening it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play. So she's kind of going to the left. So she's when she opens, she kind of has an, an immediate kind of move to the left. And knowing kind of where the jaw pain is and to what side the jaw is deflecting to gives me a lot of information of if one side of the jaw is a bit tighter, if one side's a little bit um, more loose than the other side. So kind of which side compared to where the pain is, what lets me kind of help me with that part of the diagnosis. So this next one is called the C dis, um, deviation. So it's where you kind of start on one side, as you open, you kind of move away from that side, but then you come back to that side. So here Porsche is doing that. And so then open and kind of deflecting. Once again, just kind of like the deflection, this gives me a lot of information about, especially kind of in regards to which side of the jaw is painful. Um, lets me know kind of what's going on with that joint and how it's moving. 
um, and helps with the diagnosis. And so this last one is called the S deviation. So basically kind of just the wall, the jaw wiggling back and forth as you open. So here she is kind of wiggling back and forth. And so this one always kind of tells us that it's kind of more of a muscle issue so that there's like a lack of coordination or there's a tightness for a muscle, but that wiggle usually comes from the muscles not working together to come to get that jaw open as well as they could be. Okay. And so then just kind of like you do with other joints, I need to, I want to look at all the joints um, and the muscles specifically of the jaw. So I look at those tight muscles, like um, up to the left here, I'm looking at the, the temporalis or that muscle on top. So the temporalis and the master, I'm able to kind of assess to see if it's tight from the outside and kind of can see how well you're able to contract it. Um, the medial pterygoid I, um, is this picture down to the left, or that's me kind of feeling that muscle from the inside because it is deep. And then this picture all the way to the right is me actually looking at how that joint moves itself. So it lets me know if it's, if it's the joint that's tight and it's not the muscles restricting it. Um, so I can kind of check the different motions there. And this is if it is tight, these are different treatments that I can then use to kind of help um, decrease not only the muscle tone, but the jaw. Um, tightness itself. So overall, kind of what I'm looking for is, is putting together the big picture, um, kind of that full body picture of what needs to be worked on, getting those numbers to let me know uh, where things are lacking and what needs to be improved in order for everything to work together. And then we also really try to categorize based on um, to what I think the main issue is coming from, whether it's coming from the joint, whether it's coming from muscles, whether it's coming from the disc, or if I think that there's also secondary, a lot of stress going on and we kind of need to even take a step back a little bit so that we can relax the jaw. So I'm um, kind of using all that data, not only to find out what we need to work on, but kind of helping paint the picture of where I think the issue is coming from. So I wanted to give you guys a couple kind of starting uh, tips and tricks because, uh, to kind of work on jaw pain if that is something that you have uh, or just kind of help prevent things. So some of the first most important stuff is kind of activity modification. So if there are specific things that cause pain or cause that clicking, it's kind of modify so that um, you're able to give the jaw, the jaw a break that it needs. I, usually, I know usually kind of pain gets this bad uh, kind of reputation because it's not something that we that feels good or something that we like. However, it is the way of the body to kind of signal to us that, it, that that's not something it wants to do. And so it actually kind of is our protective mechanism. It's our um, alarm system to let us know. And we really want to listen to it. So if, if kind of pushing to those extremes and opening your mouth as wide as possible, if that really bothers it and you get that pain, that's your body telling you that it wants to kind of limit that. So listening to that, that pain system and not pushing into that extreme, especially if you're getting clicks or that pain. Um, one of the big things is making sure you're chewing equally on both sides. Unless you get a direct hit and the doctor has told you specifically do not chew on that side, or if you've had surgery and they told you not to chew, chew on that side, you want to make sure uh, that you're chewing equally. As I said before, that masseter is one of the strongest muscles there are. So if you're always chewing on one side of the body or one side of the mouth, then that muscle is going to get super tight over there and overworked while the other side is actually not going to get that kind of constant exercise. Um, and then kind of reducing, so we call them parafunctional activities. So like things like biting the lip, biting the side of the mouth, clenching and grinding. So those are things that extra kind of tasks for the jaw to do and kind of moving it through different ranges. So uh, kind of limiting those will help the jaw only has to do the jobs that it needs to. So I know one big thing we, I usually talk about is kind of a night guard. So especially if you know that those parafunctional activities is like grinding at night, um, something that you can try is a night guard. So I have not found kind of a very specific brand that I think is best, but I've recommended just over the counter kind of night guards to everyone. So, um, and it's one of those things that if it helps you and if it helps decrease kind of that grinding and it makes your jaw feel better in the morning, definitely keep using it. If it's one of those things you don't feel any better, it doesn't feel any different after, it's not something to kind of keep forcing. The night guard works great for some people and for other people, it's not something that helps with their nighttime grinding. So kind of listening to your own body and it, as something that you could try, um, but don't keep 
forcing it if it makes your pain worse or if you don't really think it has too much of an effect. Um, so being aware because chewing and kind of eating is one of the big things we do, being aware of kind of the types of food. So um, if you have pain, chewy and hard foods are always going to be the hardest on the jaw. So thinking about kind of getting softer for a little bit, that doesn't mean forever. That just means kind of why you give the jaw some time to relax, especially if you kind of had a quick flare up. And then thinking about changing your bite size. So if you know opening your mouth a lot always causes pain, taking some smaller bites. Also, once again, not a kind of forever thing, but just to give your jaw some time to relax, kind of decrease irritation. Um, before slowly increasing the bite size. Yawning, so a lot of times when people kind of have that click or that pain, especially with opening their mouth as much as possible, um, one of the things to help limit that is putting the tongue on the roof of your mouth so that when you yawn, um, you only kind of keep it within the range that the jaw is, we call it the functional range of the jaw. Um, so if you kind of always get that pop or something, if you yawn with the tongue at the roof of your mouth, you'll still get the yawn out, but it kind of helps limit that motion so you don't get the click or you don't get the pain. And as we talked about before, posture, especially when you're doing things like computer work, because nowadays we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings where you'll be talking um, or a lot of other video meetings. And then with, um, when you're sitting at the table and eating. So these are times where not, the posture is directly affecting kind of the motions of the jaw. So this picture I kind of have up to the right, kind of it shows that forward head posture um, all the way to the right that I was talking about before, the shoulders kind of forward and then the head kind of coming up a little bit, which you can kind of see the strain kind of the position it puts not only in the neck, but the jaw there. And then the better posture is kind of that neck kind of tucked back a little bit. I think like, like um, drawers, like a chest of drawers, kind of going straight back so that your neck is completely in line and your shoulders are back, just to kind of put all the joints at the proper level they need to be. Um, so one of the big things is so the resting position of the jaw. So this resting position allows the muscles to completely relax and it actually gives some space to the joint so that it's able to, um, so that it's not constantly compressed. So the resting position of the jaw, and uh, Portia's doing it to the right here. So, uh, so first you put your tongue to the back of the teeth on the roof of your mouth so that there's just about like a couple millimeters between your molars, but your molars should not be touching. And so once you get that position, so that's what she has on the top right there, then um, she closes, you close your lips because kind of normal breathing is more so through the nose instead of just breathing through the mouth. So this is the resting position of the jaw, something that you can kind of do throughout the day. Like if you know you're getting neck pain um, throughout your workday, just taking a couple of minutes, kind of get back to that resting position and allow those muscles in the joint itself to get a little bit of a break. But then also kind of with, as we talked about with decreasing stress, and um, kind of promoting relaxation. Whenever you're doing anything like breathing exercises or meditation, um, kind of making sure you're actually in that resting position of the jaw. So the jaw is also getting kind of the relaxation. So for decreasing stress, I really like kind of meditation, mindfulness, breathing exercises, whatever works best for you to kind of help with that stress and decrease kind of that tone of wanting to tense on up. I know a lot of my patients have really liked a different free apps on the phone. I've heard a lot of good things about like Headspace and um, I Breathe and Calm. So kind of finding what kind of works for you just to kind of help decrease your stress. Some people's stress is decreased by walking. That's also aerobic activity is a great way to decrease stress. But thinking while you're doing it of keeping that jaw in its resting position. And then something else very important is sleep hygiene. So with any injury you have, sleeping is very important. This is when the body gets its chance to kind of heal throughout the night um, and kind of help get the joint kind of what it needs when it's uh, painful, painful. So even if the jaw is not the reason that you're having like difficulty sleeping, if you're not sleeping well because uh, you're going to bed too late or um, you're watching like TV right before, or you're kind of just not getting sleep well because that's not something you do. Sometimes pain can be helped greatly by just getting the correct amount of sleep. So kind of putting together a schedule, making sure that um, you don't exercise too closely to you go to bed. So kind of all those, we call them like sleep hygiene, making sure you're getting kind of those um, around eight hours, seven to eight hours of sleep that you need so that the body has a chance to kind of go and heal. 
And if you're someone who kind of wakes up a lot of times with pain um, in the jaws, one of the things that they recommend is seeing how it feels. Like if you sleep on your stomach, trying not to sleep on it, because especially if that's the, the jaw and the side that's down, it puts a lot of pressure through the jaw and it actually stretches all the muscles on that side. So sometimes it can cause just a little bit more compression and irritation to the joint itself. You're not doing any damage to it, but it's kind of just that pressure is just kind of irritating it. So that's one of the things that you can try first. Okay. And then I'm gonna stop sharing for a second so that you guys can see me. So I can kind of go over these a little bit more specifically. Um, so starting off, I do want to um, show you guys that resting position again. So you kind of put the tongue right on the back of the teeth there. So this is what it would look like if my lips weren't closed. And then closing the lips is how you kind of get that full resting position of the jaw. So it's only a little bit, enough to kind of decrease the pressure on the jaw and allow those muscles to relax. Um, and so then some of the things that I kind of start with, uh, exercise wise, um, to kind of help decrease it is so you can do some self-massage. So for the um, temporalis, kind of I prefer to do these laying down so that your neck and your upper back is completely relaxed too. But kind of just doing kind of circles, you can kind of look through a different areas, finding what's tight, kind of staying on that for about like a minute or two and kind of working on the muscles there. The master, as I said before, so it's kind of from this um, cheekbone all the way down to the angle here. So it kind of runs right through here. So this is another place you can kind of just do circles, kind of moving up and down. So it's a little bit more to the side here, going up and down, finding a, a nice spot, kind of staying on it for about a minute or two. And with all of these, um, if you do, as you're kind of working on it, if pain does kind of send to either the teeth or, or somewhere else, that's completely normal, that's fine. But it lets you know that you found a trigger point and it's actually an area that needs to get worked out. Um, but with the masseter and with the temporalis, you can do it with mouth closed. And then also you can kind of have your mouth open as you relax it. When your mouth is open, those muscles are both stretched a little bit more. So you can get a little bit more different areas versus when it's closed. Um, with neck muscles, so some of the uh, neck muscles that I find are kind of pretty important to work on is this upper trap can be one that gets pretty tight. So the stretch I like to do for that is looking down and away kind of holding like this. The important part is whatever hand you're going away from is actually holding on to like a chair or seat to keep that shoulder down. So you can kind of get that full stretch in that neck there, kind of helping out. So that's a stretch for that upper trap. And then um, kind of a muscle release we do. So I have a theracane here. You can also use a bar, but kind of putting it directly kind of in that area and holding down and tilting your head away. So this is, we call it a muscle release for the upper trap to kind of help decrease its tension so that it's not kind of helping pull that jaw forward. Another way, if you don't kind of have that cane or bar, if you take a lacrosse ball and then you take like a towel or a sheet, you can put that lacrosse ball kind of underneath and then hold on to the area like this, so that's kind of in there. And then I kind of do that same kind of moving away motion to help kind of work out that muscle a little bit. So those are ways to kind of get those muscles. And then uh, I like to get tennis balls for this. So you have a couple muscles in the back right here, which kind of put the head up into that position. I like to have tennis balls usually. I usually get two. And just laying down on those tennis balls can help kind of decrease all the tension in that area and help us get into better neck posture afterwards. So those are just a couple different muscles to kind of start on. If it's one of the muscles that I think needs to be worked on um, that's from the inside, like you can do kind of self-massage to those pterygoid muscles. That is something that I usually teach and make sure form is kind of completely correct. But those will all kind of feel good and nice to kind of work out, especially after a stressful day. And then with strengthening, so, um, one of my favorite exercises, so I call this uh, shoulder external rotation. So you, you have a band, hands face up, elbows staying down, and you're coming out to the side by squeezing your shoulder blades. So what it looks like in the back is kind of that nice squeeze as you open up. And the important thing here too is making sure that your neck 
is not forward like this. You want to get kind of that good posture. You can work on getting your jaw kind of in that resting position. And then going in and out like that. Um, so that is one of my favorite posture exercises. Even if you don't have a band, that is an exercise I like to do kind of without a band throughout the day, especially if I've been sitting for a long time at a desk and I'm just kind of feeling overall stiff. Even without a band, doing that a couple of times will help open up the front of the chest so you can get into better posture and it'll activate some of the muscles in the back um, so that they can work a little bit more. And then um, one of the biggest exercises that I do for the jaw is controlled opening. So kind of no matter what the main issue is kind of going on in the jaw, how you open and kind of that quality in motion is so important um, for the jaw. So just kind of with like yawning, the way you do this is you put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and you only open as far as your tongue stays. So what it would look like is this. So I like to do this one in front of the mirror so you can assess your own kind of quality and your motion that's going on. So you're not doing a huge motion in the jaw. You're just working on the jaw kind of um, opening and closing slightly. Um, and you not only like if you have pain or you have clicking before that, you just go through the motion where you don't have that issue. So if you get pain even um, before you kind of get all the way down with your tongue still in your mouth, you stop right above it and you just kind of work through that range, kind of same with the clicking. Or if you notice that you kind of have one of those um, deviations or reflections we talked about earlier, like if you start to move your jaw around, just staying in very small ranges, which is why I like to use the mirror so that you can kind of see, um, you can kind of control those and just work on the muscle coordination of making sure that it's opening correctly. So those are just some tips and tricks that I like to start with. Um, when there is any jaw pain to kind of see if you can help kind of decrease the tone, work on everything overall and decrease that irritation that you're getting to the joint. Um, so this is the part, um, just because I'm now in the chat window, if you guys have any questions about anything, I know uh, that was a lot of information at once, but if you guys have any questions, um, I'm free to answer them now. Uh, and I'll kind of give you guys a couple minutes. And then at the very end, I'll put up the last slide, which has more information about my email. Feel free if you don't want to ask the question during the chat now. If you want to um, email, send me an email later, I'll be more than happy to answer um, kind of through that. But yeah, I'll give you guys a couple seconds just in case anyone does want to write any questions. If not, I'll go ahead and put that last slide up so that you guys can have my contact information. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to put up um, that last slide. Like I said, it has my email on it. If you guys do have any questions for me, um, feel free to contact me. And thank you guys so much for coming and listening to this webinar. Oh, I just got one. Um, is there any modalities that can be used in treatment for jaw pain? Um, so I know kind of looking at different things that have helped. So especially if there's any swelling, um, ice is usually kind of the go-to. So, um, to, and that helps kind of decrease it. And if there's like a lot of soreness, so like if it, if the injury just happened, so if it's new jaw pain in the um, last couple of, um, like a couple of days, I usually recommend ice. So ice will help kind of control the symptoms and help kind of get that inflammation under control to help decrease the pain. In conditions that seem like it's more coming from the muscles or um, if it's something like arthritis where it feels better as you kind of warm it up, then usually heat feels a little bit better. But my go-to kind of with both ice and with heat is if you try one, if it feels good, Great, keep using it. If it does not, um, if it kind of aggravates you, don't use it. So even if you do have, um, if like you do have arthritis and you uh, usually heats better, but for some people that's not the case. So if ice makes you feel better then, definitely keep using ice. But both of those will kind of help kind of relax the area for that time being. 
Um, and so that second question, do you recommend heat or ice for the jaw? Uh, as I said before, usually like if it's a new injury or if it seems like it's coming from the jaw joint itself, usually it likes ice a little bit more. While if it seems like it's more coming from the from the muscles or if it's like um, kind of like arthritis, just like an arthritis at the knee or the hip where you feel very stiff, heat kind of helps with that stiffness. Okay, and then the next question, after having TMJ jaw pain, is there any chance for it to reoccur? Um, so it really kind of depends on what's kind of was the first issue for that for the jaw. So sometimes if it is, um, if it's the muscles, and it was because they were overworked due to like poor posture, or you kind of chewing on one side of the mouth. Uh, if you kind of keep uh, you can always kind of maybe like overwork those muscles again, but hopefully like you can reduce them with the clicks and everything. Um, they've noticed that that's something that uh, can be more kind of a lifelong. We really want to get you back to function and everything like that. But sometimes after having clicks and resolving them, there can be a reoccurrence of those clicks. But our big thing is kind of making sure that those clicks don't impede how much you can use your mouth or how much, um, uh, like, or cause any pain. So that's kind of what our big thing is. Um, with anything kind of like arthritis, you can always kind of decrease the time. It's not actually changing um, the arthritis itself. So uh, sometimes you might have more kind of those stiff, achy days, especially with weather that can kind of reoccur. Um, wait, so it kind of really comes down to what was the cause of the jaw pain and, um, to kind of know if it's going to reoccur or not. So that's a bit more specific. Okay. Okay. So I am going to kind of give just a couple more seconds uh, for questions, just in case anyone has any. And then, like I said, I'm going to put that last slide up so you guys can have my contact information. Um, and then I will end the chat probably at like 7.15. Okay. okay, so this is my contact information. I'll leave it up for a little bit, but thank you guys so much for coming out and I hope you guys learned something. Okay. 
We have a great night, everyone.